In this question, we have a charged particle and it's moving through a uniform magnetic field along a circular path. And we've learned in this chapter that the radius of that circular path is given by this equation right here. So we have the mass, the velocity, the magnitude of the charge, and the magnetic field strength. And it's going to be important to incorporate the kinetic energy into this equation. And we recall, of course, from physics one that the kinetic energy of a particle is the mass times the speed squared divided by two. And what we'll do is solve this for velocity. So we'll multiply both sides of the equation by two. This gives us 2k equals mv squared. We'll divide by m on both sides and then take the square root on both sides. So we can see that the speed is given by the square root of 2k over m. We're going to make a substitution here where we have the v right here, we will substitute in this quantity. So now we'll have mass times the square root of 2k over m divided by qb. These particles are all positively charged, so we don't need the absolute value in this question. Now, we're going to actually rewrite the m as the square root of m squared. Recall that when you take the square root of a variable squared, you would just have that variable. And the reason we want to do that is because we want both terms in the numerator to be underneath a square root because if they're both underneath a square root, then we can multiply them. So we're gonna multiply this quantity by this quantity. So basically, we'll have a big square root, and now we'll have 2km squared over m, and then this will all be divided by qb. If we look carefully, we can cancel a factor of m underneath that square root. So now we're finally left with the square root of 2km over qb, and this will give us the radius expressed in terms of the kinetic energy. Why don't we write it one more time? Now, it will be useful for us to manipulate this equation just a little bit further. And to do that, we'll multiply both sides by QB. This will cancel it out on the right-hand side. So now we'll have QBR is equal to the square root of 2KM. And then finally, we will square both sides. So we're going to have Q squared, B squared, radius squared is equal to 2KM. Now, let's go back up to the question and note that there are only a few things that are going to be varying here. The mass will vary depending on the particle. The charge will vary, again, depending on the particle. And the kinetic energy is what we're looking for. The magnetic field and the radius of the circular path are constants in this question. So because they're constants, it's going to turn out that we won't need to regard them. But perhaps to see that more clearly, we'll do the following. Let's take the proton. Let's symbolize this as the charge on the proton squared times the magnetic field squared times the radius squared is equal to two times the kinetic energy of the proton times the mass of the proton. Then in part A of the question, we're looking at an alpha particle. So we're gonna use a little alpha notation for that particle. So then using the same equation, we would have the charge on the alpha particle squared times the magnetic field squared times the radius squared equals two times the kinetic energy of the alpha particle times the mass of the alpha particle. Now, what we'll do is we'll divide these two equations. And this is going to set us up with a convenient proportion. Notice that the magnetic fields will cancel and the radii will cancel. So this leaves us, leaves us with the charge on the proton squared divided by the charge on the alpha particle squared is equal to, the twos will cancel, of course. So now we'll have the kinetic energy of the proton times the mass of the proton divided by the kinetic energy of the alpha particle times the mass of the alpha particle. This will be a very convenient setup. In fact, we want to do a little bit more manipulation. We're going to multiply both sides by the kinetic energy of the alpha particle. Our goal is to solve for the kinetic energy of the alpha particle, so we want to isolate it. So now we have the kinetic energy of the alpha particle times the ratio of these charges squared. This will equal the kinetic energy of the proton times the mass of the proton over the mass of the alpha particle. Finally, we will multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this fraction right here. So the reciprocal would be Q alpha squared over QP squared. 
We'll do this on the other side as well. And you'll notice that we can cancel the Q alpha squareds and the QP squareds. We finally have an expression that we're going to be able to use to calculate the kinetic energy of the alpha particle. We can see that it's equal to the kinetic energy of the proton multiplied by the mass of the proton divided by the mass of the alpha particle. And then we can actually rewrite this as Q alpha over QP, all of which is squared. So let's begin to plug in some known values. The kinetic energy of the proton was given way back in the question as 1.0 mega electron volt. So we'll put in 1.0 mega electron volt. The mass of the proton is one atomic mass unit. The mass of the alpha particle was given in the question as four atomic mass units. The charge on the alpha particle, we go back, we can see that it was right there, 2e. And the charge on a proton is just 1e and then don't forget to square it. The E's will cancel. So then you'll square the two to give you four and then multiply that by one fourth, which actually cancels out. So basically you have one mega electron volt times one fourth times four. And again, those cancel. So the answer to part A is just one mega electron volt. A lot of work for a simple result. We can move on to part B. We're not gonna to have to do all the work again. We're just gonna change the charge and then change the mass. This time it is for a deuteron rather than an alpha particle. So that won't dramatically change anything. Why don't we grab the equation that we developed for the alpha particle, but this time we'll just change the notation to a deuteron. So we'll paste it over here. We'll change the little alpha symbol to a D We'll do that here and here as well. Okay, so now we'll plug in the kinetic energy of the proton, one mega electron volt. Mass of a proton is one atomic mass unit. The mass of the deuteron was given in the question as two atomic mass units. The charge of the deuteron way back up there was positive one E. Charge of a proton also positive one E. We'll square that. The E's will cancel. You'll have one squared, which is just one. So basically it's gonna be one mega electron volt times a half, and this will give us 0.5 mega electron volts. And that is the correct answer to part B.